Hey everybody, today we are processing Ohio seeds. Ohai are in the Basi, which is the bean family. So they have, um, let me move some of the stuff out of the way so you can see. They have a fruit that is called a legume. Legumes have um, two seams and then that, um, that keep the fruit together. So these are the two seams right here in the middle and these are the um, portions of the fruit. Um, so when they ripen, the seeds, or not the seeds, but the legumes dry out and split along the seams, releasing the seeds. So here, when you collect ohi seeds, you want them to be dry, so then that way they um, are much easier to work with. You don't want them to be green like this. Like this one's half dry, so maybe there are some seeds in here, but when they're still green, they're not ripe yet. Um, so the seeds are not fully developed yet, and they're still kind of soft. So you want them to be nice and dry, and then when you open them, you want to open them along the seam, exposing the seeds, and the seeds usually just drop out. And then you can come across the fruit, and it usually opens the whole thing up. And then all the seeds just drop out. It's very simple, very easy. Um, Ojai is um, Cisbania tomentosa, and it is an endangered species. So all of these seeds have very important ecological um, value. And um, so a lot of these so a lot of these seeds are parasitized they're not parasitized, but predated by weevils and other um, insects. So it's not uncommon for me to see uh, little crawly crawly things. I had a few earlier today. Actually, here's one. i just pick it up. Actually, I can just take the camera. You might be able to see it. It's right in the center. It's moving. And that is, I believe, a weevil larvae. Camera's having a hard time. I'm zoom out a little bit. Weevil larvae usually don't have four legs, so actually that might be a Lepidoptera larvae, a little moth or something that's predating the seeds. But that's one of the problems you get anywhere, actually. Uh, so by getting the seeds early, we can avoid having them predate it nearly as much as they would if they're just left out on their own. And since this is an endangered species, it's really important for us to save as much seed as possible so that we can propagate the species and get it back out in the landscape. So that nice sound that you're hearing usually means that they're viable if they bounce. If they don't bounce and they don't have that nice little Pink. Um, they're usually hollow and have been predated or molded or something. I'm going to try to open up this green one so you guys can see uh, what not really... Yeah, like, here's some um, seeds that just don't really look very happy. They're kind of deflated as opposed to, um, that one has a hole in it, one right there, I don't know if you can see it, but that's a sign that there, that there is like a weevil or some type of grub in there, just chowing down. So that's the dead part of, or the dried out part of the fruit, and now the green part is just usually a little bit tougher. And I just want to show you what they look like on the inside. So we're just splitting it just like you would have been. 
along the two um, along the two seams. And that's the inside of the immature uh, of the immature fruit. You can see that the um, kind of you can see that the fruit still gr or the seeds are still green and they're still kind of encased in kind of like a little pithy papery matrix. Um, so these may be good, they may not be good. Um, they sound nice, but they could they might not be fully developed and may mold or rot. So I'll throw that in the trash pile. So yeah, I just want to show you guys that a little bit. Okay, so we have just processed all the fruits. You know, I have all the seeds and little bugs and stuff. And some of the chaff. Or chaff. Yes, the chaff. Um, all ready to go. So what we're going to do is we are going to float them. Floating is a technique used to separate all the viable seeds from the unviable seeds. It's very easy. Other ways that you could do it is you could um, just separate them with like wind because all the non-viable stuff will also blow away. But we don't really have a ton of wind and we only have so many seeds and the species is endangered so we're going to float them. So what you do is you just take some seeds and then put it right in the water. And you see as they float down, that is, um, or not as they float down, but as they sink, those are all the viable seeds, all the junk is on top. For the most part. You may have to stir it a little. Um, because they're starting to kind of just pool on the top. And then what I'll probably end up doing is just taking some off. But we should end up with quite a few, um, with quite a few seeds. So I found this little plastic thing, and we're gonna see if it works. So yeah, it's a bunch that are starting to sink um, now that we stirred it. And you can see some of, the, some of the seeds are starting to float. Um, even though they go below the water surface, and that is very good because um, it means that they're maintaining the difference, um, or that the solution's maintaining um, the crap from the good stuff. <laughs> and you can see there are some grubs down in there, but I'll take care of them eventually. So. With this hand, I'm just going to try to scoop out as much of the junk as I can. Um, I'm going to set it over here on the side. I'm sure I could do something easier, like use a net or something, but it's okay. It's more. Stir it again. Make sure we get as much as possible. So I just took them out of the jar and cleaned them all out, and now I spread them over the tray that I was separating the mat on and I'm going to leave them overnight so that they can dry and then we can put them in a brown paper bag. Um, this project is really cool because we are getting the endangered species back out onto the landscape and hopefully these will be next year's um, seedlings that we take and outplant out on the peninsula in the coastal vegetation. So. See you tomorrow. Hey, so it looks like all of our Ojai seeds are dry. They just dr sat out overnight and just dried. So um, now we're just going to put them in paper bags 
and well, in a paper bag, um, and label it with the date that the seeds were collected, what species it is. So we'll basically be putting that um, that on the new label, so we know where they're from, when they were collected, how old they are, and stuff like that. And then we just put them in the refrigerator for storage. Um, so specimens only, no food, and we have tons of seeds. So, and that concludes the um, how to collect seeds from legumes, like lab techniques. All right, bye.